How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about self in Python, what it does and how we can use it in classes. So first of all, let's get started by creating a class called car. And this class is going to take an initializer which automatically inserts self. If you have a code editor, it's probably going to do this automatically. And we're also going to provide a brand of type string and a fuel type of type string and that's going to return none. Then inside here, we're going to type in self.brand is going to equal the brand and self.fuel type is going to equal the fuel type. But why do we do all of this? Well, to explain that, I'm going to create a car or an instance of a car. So this instance will be called Volvo, which will be of type car, and that's going to equal a car with the following arguments. The first one being the brand, which of course is Volvo in this case, and the fuel type is going to be set to diesel. So here we're passing in the arguments that it requires, and those get passed down the line to these two lines. But what you're going to notice is that we never had to pass in self into our constructor. There's no place here to actually pass in self because self is automatically filled by the instance, which is this right here. Once you instantiate this class, it becomes self. So from now on, self is going to refer to the Volvo. So when we create this Volvo, what we're really doing is creating Volvo.brand and Volvo.fueltype. So this data is now going to belong to the Volvo as soon as we create it. And if we were to create another car called, let's say BMW, and that will hold BMW with the fuel type set to electric. Once we create this instance, self is going to refer to the BMW. So that's the data that's going to be attached to BMW. And that's really all self does. It refers to the instance directly so that we can use the data that's connected to the Volvo or to the BMW. Without self, this would not be possible. We want each instance to be unique and self guarantees that for the data that we use self on. One thing I want to mention though, is that you do not need to call this self. We only name this self by convention, but it can literally be anything you want. You can also call it this and it will function exactly the same way. Your code editor is probably going to complain that usually the first parameter of a method is called self, but you're not required to do that. It can literally be any name. This just refers to the instance. You can even call this instance if you want. You can say inst and change the other two and that will work exactly the same way. But let's change that back to self. And what I'm going to do next is create a method in this class. So def drive, and as you'll notice, it's going to take self once again, because we want to use the data that's connected to the current instance. But we're also going to provide an additional parameter called distance of type float. And that's going to return none because we are only executing code here. But then we can print that we are driving self.brand for distance, and that should be in curly brackets, kilometers. And then in square brackets, we're going to add the fuel type or self.fuel type. And as you can see, this will use the current instance once again, while the argument without self does not rely on the instance. It's going to take the data on the spot. So now what we can do is print volvo.brand, volvo.fuel type, and we can even drive this Volvo for let's say 10 kilometers. And now when we actually try to run this, you'll notice that it's going to refer to the instance data, which means volvo.brand will contain Volvo, volvo.fuel type will contain diesel, and volvo.drive is going to drive our Volvo for 10 kilometers on diesel. It's using the instance Volvo as self. So once again, this is going to look like this, volvo.brand, volvo.fuel type, and if we did BMW, this is going to look like this. It's going to use the information from BMW. And we can actually use BMW too. So we'll just take all of that, paste it under BMW, BMW, and BMW. And it will grab the information from the BMW. It's not going to use any other information. It's going to use the instance data. And if we go back up, we can see that our BMW has a brand of BMW. The fuel type is set to electric. So that's the data that's coupled with that instance. And finally, when we try to drive the BMW, it's going to give us back that we're driving BMW for 10 kilometers 
on electric. So yeah, I hope that cleared up what self actually does. As you can see, it's not as complicated as it looks. It's only required if you want to use the data from the instance. If you ever create a method that does not use the data from the instance, it's going to become a static method. So here, if you're going to type in something such as test, and all it does is print testing, your code editor is probably going to warn you that this may be static. And that's because we do not use self anywhere inside this method. It does not rely on the instance. So what you're probably going to want to do is remove that and annotate this as a static method. And since this does not rely on the instance, you won't even have to create an instance because once again, Volvo and BMW are the instance. But if you don't rely on an instance, you can just use it directly. So if we were to take all this away and type in car test, that's going to work just fine because there's no instance required. It does not use self. But I actually have a full video on what static method does. And I'll leave that in the description box down below in case you're curious. But just to sum up this video, self refers to the instance. But yeah, let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section down below, whether you have any questions or anything to add, I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.